Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, radio channel and of course uh, as we are uh, going through the uh, FEDRI uh, review slowly uh, one of the things I wanted to show of course is the FEDRI SDR or Software Defined Radio of course has an interface that you can use on your PC Mine is HDSDR, I have there's something I like about HDSDR uh, a lot of people are using different software, you can use a uh, you know, SDR console and there's many different software that actually works for uh, the ephedri so of course there's a special DLL that you have to add to uh, HDSDR for it to work and it comes with uh, something that's the uh, SDR network control box which is this little thing that you can control you know the field effect gain of transistors and the RF gain but you can also um, have the RF gain here up uh, so this, of course, controls, and you have all the tools, and the, you know you can see here I'm at uh, a sample rate of uh, 600 kilohertz, 606,061, which is pretty much max the maximum for Wi-Fi, because this is being received the data from my uh, FEDRI SDR uh, that is plugged into my router or received on this computer through my Wi-Fi, uh, which is an AC 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So, of course, you have your display screen. You've got lots of information on the SDR itself. It's easy, you know, once you, like I, like I, I was saying in one of the live shows, one of the things you'll need to understand here is that uh, a SDR requires a minimum of computer knowledge as well as radio knowledge because it has many things. You know, the install, knowing how to have it working on your network, for example, is already a the first challenge you need to know, you know, knowing that you need to change the uh, FEDRI SDR um, default IP address if your uh, network is not on, you know, the standard uh, 192.168.0.1 because it at, at 0 0.8. Uh, mine here is on dot one dot one, so I had to I changed everything, so I reprogrammed, you know, the IP. So remember that you have to know to do this. It's not that it's difficult, but it requires a certain amount of knowledge for that to work. Then you have to set up the software, the software that will control it, know how to change and play with the sample rate. Try to see how much you can get of the sample rate, depending on your setup is going to be different. If you're on Wi-Fi, if your Wi-Fi doesn't um, give enough data, you'll have a lower sample rate than I do, for example. Um, so, you know, uh, here I've got about 600 kilohertz of waterfall, which gives you all the signals. So the vertical lines that are uh, spaced equally here are kind of harmonics of interference from different, um, different you know, switching power supplies. They aren't coming from my home because um, if I switch off everything, they're still there. And even on the battery power, they're still there. And I do not believe these are actually made by the device, but uh, made really by uh, some external, uh, you know, a neighbor has some kind of electronic device that creates a lot of noise here, and that's what I'm getting. And of course, you've got the different waterfall uh, signals. So these are signals, for example, we're here in the 20 meter amateur band, so if I pop up the volume here, uh, if you see a signal, so for example, let's wait for one strong signal to appear here. Uh, you can go with your pointer and directly, um, you know, get into, there we go, I have to tune on this one here. You have all modes available on this device. So you see here, upper sideband. So here you've got upper side and CW, you can DRM if you have uh, Dream software installed. Italy Kilo 4, this is Italian AM station. You have uh, FM, you have uh, ECSS, and you've got AM. So for example, if I want to listen to an AM signal, let's try uh, WW1, it usually comes in, well, 15610. I input that frequency, and here we are, you know, I just put it in AM mode. And here we have. My question is dealing with something. You can see that here, this is where I'm tuning. 15610. You can see here, this is. Think about this as the filter of your selectivity. 
You can see here I'm set around 4,500 kilohertz. I could move that smaller bandwidth, larger bandwidth. What's nice about that is you can, you know, when signals are very, very close together, you can actually change this to try to avoid interference from another signal. It impacts the audio output, of course. Uh, so, you know, software defined radio is extremely flexible. It's something that you can tweak everything. You know, I can play with the RF game here and say, hey, I want to put it lower a little bit, maybe to try to avoid too much interference. You see an immediate effect. Now, I didn't change it much, but you see an effect here. And of course, every signal you can check out. So I can go with my mouse pointer. I'll go here on this one, for example. See that it's on. 1575. So there's something here. What is it? I'm not sure. On 1575. I don't know what it is right now, but uh, if anyone wants to verify 1821 UT right now. So you can, you know, tune around the different signals and check it out because uh, it's, it's really fun to play with. Uh, Performance-wise, the ephedra is nice because it really is sensitive. Uh, if I had a lower noise floor here, it would be even more interesting because I could easily uh, tune in everything. But by comparing with my ICOM right now, the ephedra is close very close to my ICOM's performance. And what I get on my ICOM, I get it here and vice versa. Uh, it works. And of course, uh, because of the fact that it's well um, filtered and shielded, it doesn't generate a lot of uh, interference. You know, like some of you have been saying, well, comparing that to your um, Soft 66. Well, Soft 66 works amazingly well for the price that it, it costs. But, you know, remind you that the ephedra is around $200, $250. Soft 66 cost me $40. They're not the same device. And because they're plugged USB direct, um, also um, the Soft 66 has more noise in it from the computer and the devices than this one will have. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really a lot of fun to play with. And as you see, the ephedra is in my office. Uh, not far from my icon because that's where the antenna connectors are. And it's connected to my sloper antenna in the backyard, 22 meter long antenna in the backyard. So, I'm, you know, it's kind of cool. You're in another room with a computer and actually this is my 50 inch TV. It's really cool on a 50 inch TV to be able to listen to shortwave, tune in different signals. The visuals are fantastic because it helps you so much in tuning around. You know, anyone that has never tried a SDR, all I can say is, uh, you know, maybe this video is going to kind of convince you that it's kind of cool to, uh, to play with. So 13.845 here, a very strong signal as you see. Jesus Christ. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm really happy the Ephedra is, I would say for the price is, uh, you know, and this is not definite review, it's just little parts of videos where I will end with um, my, my own little review of what I think and what are its flaws. You know, one of the flaws that I would give it uh, as we're tuning around, uh, the front end overloads easily. So if you push the signal level too much, you will have all sorts of spurious signaling. If I push this to the max, for example, or have game, look at all the little lines that show up suddenly. It's overloaded and it's it's overwhelmed by everything now, so you got to be careful to set up the sensitivity, the RF gain, everything. That's also a, a you know a equilibrium that you have to to find, and it's the same as the Soft 66, but this one adds better. So you know, kind of cool to be able to see a full spectrum like that, and uh, really, you know. It's WWB 15 megahertz. Um, really, really have a lot of fun listening. So um, I'll have more. You know, I'll have a few videos that I'll be posting in the next few days for the setup. I'll have a few videos of uh, explaining a little more the information we have 
and uh, a display of SDR. And I mean, HDSDR is, is, is a one software. Uh, you'll have SDR console, you'll have other, you know, you can have a SDR sharp. But the thing is, the information displayed pretty much is the same thing, it's just differently uh, administered. I like the fact that there's an S meter on this one, uh, on the left side of the screen. So I'm having, you know, uh, I will do some more videos also of, you know, uh, of, of not just HDSDR, I'll, I'll install this and tweak it with different software that it can work with and of course uh, post that eventually. So having fun and of course I'm continuing the tests and uh, uh, the, the, the review, but the uh, Fedri is an uh, amazing device, I can tell you that. Uh, it's one of my favorite devices. It will probably, uh, because of the fact that I can tune it easily from everywhere, become one of my main receivers. Uh, simply because of the, the, the easy tuning of all my, uh, anywhere on my computer. You know, I can imagine myself this summer in the backyard in the balcony and tuning the Afedri to see uh, if I can receive a signal that I'm receiving on a portable receiver, for example, outside. You know, it's pretty cool. And of course, you can even extend that even more. With SDR console, you can actually put it online if you want and have it, to, you can tune it from anywhere on the internet. Uh, and that, that's something that I possibly would like to do from time to time, maybe have some of you tune my receiver here in Montreal also. So, uh, Ephedri SDR, amazing little device, is still having fun and uh, continuing my uh, listening and my tests. So I hope you guys enjoy the show, uh, enjoy the videos. And um, we'll have, uh, of course, some uh, live shows using this setup here so that we can share and talk about it more. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and hope you enjoyed this little look into the Ephedri uh, SDR.